All right, what's going on everybody? This is Broken Games HDR once again. And uh, in this video, I'm going to be doing a review of Gamescom opening night live 2021 with Jeff Keighley. So I live streamed the entire event and uh, did my reaction to it. Uh, if you wanna go check that out. Um, but I'm obviously doing my review of the event in a separate video because those, you know, co-stream videos always get copyright matches. I'm not even sure if it's fully visible everywhere because, you know, when you get audio and video um, matches because of the songs they play or sometimes because of the video, they limit the visibility of, of the actual video. And that just comes with the territory. That's to be expected. That wasn't a surprise to me. So we're going to review everything that was shown and talked about in this video. And uh, let's get right to it. So first, and I believe this is in chronological order of the way uh, of how it was shown at the actual show. Uh, so first was definitely Saints Row, right? And it does seem to be a reboot. And this, we definitely knew we were getting something from Saints Row because Jeff Keighley confirmed it before the show. And it was teased at the official Saints Row website, I believe, right? So this seems to be a Saints Row reboot. And I'm happy it's a reboot. And I'm looking forward to this because one, I felt like Saints Row got way too goofy. I got, I felt like it got way too comical and, and nonsensical. You know, the last one I beat was Saints Row 3. I know there were Saints Row 4 and they were Saints Row Get Out of Hell and wasn't there, I, I don't remember which one was the one where you were president and you had superpowers. The, the game got way too ridiculous. I mean, three was pretty ridiculous, but I felt like it was still playable, right? And Saints Row got here. The reason Saints Row got here is because like um, they felt like GTA was too much competition for them. So they were like, oh, we got to go in a little bit of a different lane um, because GTA was, you know, became a lot more popular. Uh, than, than Saints Row, because Saints Row 1 and 2 were a lot more like GTA. So they're like, oh, we're going to kind of be a parody game, right? It's not going to take itself serious. It's going to be a joke. And I just felt like they went way too far with it. And that's when I stopped caring about the Saints Row uh, franchise. Now, even though this one doesn't look like it's taking itself too serious either, it's not, you know, pushing the limit as far as I see, even though this is only CGI, it wasn't gameplay. It doesn't seem like it's, it's on the comical level of the um, other Saints Row games where you're slapping people with dildos and you have super speed and superpowers, all that nonsense that I didn't like. So, um, and this had this has a uh, the boss in this game. Well, the the boss as as in the woman in charge, I believe. Uh, the uh, the protagonist that you play as, even though I think they allowed you to customize your characters in previous Saints Row games, um, there's a I, there's the protagonist. Um, is a black woman if you actually do play as her or if you create your own character either way she's she's the boss in charge right so um, and there was a lot of uh, representation at a lot of these games shown at Gamescom um, some people get upset when you mention representation um, but I'm, I'm I noticed and I'm glad there was a, a lot of black queens a lot of black a lot of black women shown in these games um, so yeah I look forward to Saints Row and I believe they confirmed it's releasing, ooh, February 25th? Yeah, I believe it was February, February 25th, um, which is awfully, that's that's the week after Horizon Forbidden West, but we're going to get to that later. Next game was Marvel Marvel's Midnight Suns, and this is by 2K and Firaxis. I'm very excited for this game because I'm a huge XCOM fan, and the, and the, the previous report about this was that there wasn't going to be any actual Marvel um, characters in it, which is clearly not true, right? Uh, they were the, the report said you were just going to create your own Marvel character and it happens in the world of Marvel, but you weren't going to actually see any Marvel characters. That was definitely wrong um, because we saw a bunch. We saw Wolverine. We saw the Robbie Reyes Ghost Rider, which I'm excited about. Because, you know, there's like, I think it's three different versions of Robbie Ray, uh, three different versions of Ghost Rider. Um, Johnny Blaze, Robbie Reyes, uh, and I forgot who the last, who the other one is. Um, but there's been a lot of Ghost Riders, but the main, there's like mainly three. Uh, we, we saw Blade, you know, Blade has been 
neglected neglected from uh, a lot of these uh, Marvel um, games. And then apparently this is uh, they created a brand new original Marvel character. I think they they said her name was Hunter um, or something like that. And she's like the focus of the story or something like that. And it's a I think they believe they uh, classified this as a tactical RPG. And I'm excited about that because, you know, I love XCOM. It, it, I think it may be a little bit different than XCOM, but I'm excited about that. Uh, look, I definitely look forward to that. Uh, Call of Duty Vanguard. We got the we got the Stalingrad uh, demo gameplay and Van, and I, I say it all the time. I get very excited and I always anticipate the Call of Duty campaigns. I'm not a Call of Duty multiplayer fan. I'm one of those people, one of the few people probably left who plays Call of Duty for the single players. So I look forward to Call of Duty each year because of for for the single player. Last the last one that that came out was trash. But that call what was it? The Call of Duty Modern Warfare reboot single player? Oh, that was amazing. That was that was an outstanding single player. And this one looks to be really good. They when it comes to their World War II single players, they definitely don't miss. It's always like really good. And we got to we got to play as the uh, female Russian sniper uh, character, um, and it's looking good. Like that the that the gun animations, the sound design. Even though we were watching it in like very uh, compressed 1080p, uh, the games you can tell you can tell the game was still gonna look really good. So in uh, the gun animations, just how the guns seem to behave, all of that. Oh yeah, I, I definitely look forward to that. Um, that single player to that that campaign it looks great uh halo infinite um so halo infinite is coming out as rumored that we learned this morning december 8th that's been confirmed um there will also be a limited edition xbox series x custom halo infinite xbox series x uh halo fans are going to be you know fighting to get that and and also and also an, a Halo themed custom Elite controller. They're also going to be fighting to get that. You know, Xbox dudes love their controllers. That's not a shot. Like I'm not, I'm not taking a shot or a jab. They love their controllers. It is what it is, um, and that's fine. And it's coming out um, December eighth. Once again, you know, there was the whole debate on my last video about how is it delayed when they never gave a. Con uh, an official release date i'm like it, bro it, it was delayed whether or not you want to believe it was delayed fine i'm not going to argue with that with you about that i definitely don't believe they intended or wanted to launch in december but it does <clears throat> coincide with what the halo they said the halo 20th anniversary or something like that um what was it 20th or 30th uh th 30th uh obviously um 20th i'm bugging uh so yeah uh, I look forward to that. I look forward to that in December. I'm actually happy it's 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 December, early December, because I like when all these games are spread out and not, you know, they're not competing with each other because it makes it easier for us as the gamer to be able to play um, all of it. But as I did say in the previous video, it, that does disqualify it from game of the year um, <laughs> this year and probably next year because of recency bias and all that stuff. Uh, but that's less important. That's less, that's less important. Um, Cult of the Lamb. Cult of the Lamb is like this, um, it's, it's this action, action game with a pretty cool, uh, art style. Um, I really like the art style. Uh, it's, it's like this action hack and slash game, almost adventure game. It looks cool. It's by Devolver Digital and Massive Monster. And I will say Devolver Digital has been on they, they like when it comes to these smaller almost like indie type games they they've like made that their lane and they get the best of the best so yeah that's all i can say about that i'm not like absolutely sold on that game but it looks good uh midnight fight express uh this is some uh single single player uh like over the top action game with really really brutal me uh, melee combat um that's the most that I remember about it. I don't really have that much uh, comment comments on this, but uh, yeah. Uh, moving on, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Shredder's Revenge. I can't wait for this game. This is definitely going to be a weapon wheel game night. We're going to be playing that um, 
on on a weapon wheel night. Absolutely. So they announced April. April is going to be a p- playable character. And the animations in the game look so cool. It's like this mixed hybrid of like some of the animations and the moves from the old game, but made a little bit more modern and spruced up. It looks it looks amazing. I can't wait for this game. Um, I'm like I, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like Turtles in Time, is probably one of my favorite games of all time. Um, I do think. I, I mean, I'm sure they're gonna add more characters in the game. Um, like Casey Jones should be in it. Uh, I, I even brought up during my stream like Venus, like Venus, you know, the female turtle. I, I don't know her her actual origin. Right. But she never gets any like appearances or cameos in any type of turtle games or even the turtle, uh, the turtle um series, like animated series. I'm like, I don't know if she's canon or not. Was that like a one off thing? Wasn't she in one of the teen, one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies in the 90s? I think she might have been. I'm not sure. Uh, Super Monkey Ball, Banana Mania. I have no comment on Super Monkey Ball. Like, I don't, it's just not a game that I care about or pay attention to. Splitgate Season 0. Um, I played, I played a little bit of Splitgate. Um, the game, the game is good. It's not necessarily one of those games where I'm clamoring and I'm always like, like I I wake up and I want to run to play Splitgate. I haven't, like, I played it for like two days in a row, then I didn't play it for like, a week or so, but it's definitely a good game. It's just not necessarily capturing me, but it's 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 a good game. And I'm happy for the developers. Like it's one of those games where they made the game and it didn't get much attention immediately. Uh, because it's been out like a f- I remember I played this game a year before it got all this attention, right? It, it, and, and you know, it was just a game where it, it existed, some people knew about it, it had a I would say a less than decent player base as far as quantity goes. And then it blew up, you know, so that's I'm sure the developers are living out their dream, even though they're, they've had some troubles with the servers keeping up with the popularity. This is definitely um, good for them. Happy for them. Riders Republic. Uh, this is Ubisoft's open world um, extreme sports game. I don't really care about that. Uh, UFL is a free to play soccer game. So uh, maybe that'll give FIFA and PES is done, right? Konami is making PES and they renamed it to another game, right? Um, Soccer is obviously a huge game or football, depending on where you're at. Huge sport, most popular sport in the world. So can a free-to-play soccer game even actually fail? Can it actually fail? Seems, Seems to be impossible. Uh, Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker saga. This is like nine games in one or something, right? Or is it, is it the last trilogy? I don't know. Uh, it launches spring 2022. I'm not a fan of the, the Lego games. I don't really play the Lego games. I'm a big Star Wars fan. Um, some people know that I'm a big Star Wars fan, but, uh, yeah, I can't sit and look at Lego visuals throughout a whole game. I can't do it. Synced off planet. And there was a cinematic trailer. This is a sci-fi shooter. Um, not don't really have much comment on it from what I've seen. Outlast Trials. I'm a big Outlast fan. Outlast one and two. I will say Outlast one uh, probably had more of an impact in general than uh, than Outlast two. Outlast two went a little bit off the rails. It was a little bit stranger, I guess, as far as the story goes but the gameplay you know was still you know what we expected from outlast and i think outlast is is kind of like a one of a a one of a kind game where it's a horror game that doesn't give you you know any any weapons and it really makes you feel hope hopeless and scared and just full of despair and it's creepy and they got amazing uh atmosphere and ambiance and they get everything right in them games man they really make you feel like you're helpless uh, all you got is a cam uh, a, a camcorder, and that when that thing run out of batteries, you really feel like it's the it, everything's over for you. Um, okay, uh, moving on. Uh, so I look forward to Outlast Trials because Outlast Trials is a com- is a cooperative uh, horror game um, set in the Outlast world. So I I look at it as almost like Saw. Like if Saw had a multiplayer game, um, that's how I look at it. Even though yeah, no, I'm not the biggest fan of co op games. I'm I'm gonna um, I'm gonna watch this one. I'm gonna keep my eye on it. Um, I'm not even sure how to say this. So how to pr- is it is it Doke Five or Doke V or Doke Ev? <laughs> I'm not sure. It's the it's that um 
it's that open world RPG game that had surprisingly impressive visuals uh, where you, I think, fight monsters. You were like fighting monsters. The, the visuals looked impressive and the animations were very impressive. Um, but uh, I'm not a... Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the premise of the game is, um, but it, it was it was full of action. It was vibrant, had a lot of colorful characters. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, pronounce it because of the way they've written it here. Uh, D-O-K-E capital V. So that could be Dok 5 or Dokev or. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's probably Dokev. Because I, I thought the I thought the V might be a Roman Roman numeral five, so yeah. Um, uh, Jurassic World Evolution two. I, I don't care about really care about Jurassic World at all. Um, Far Cry six. I I do not look forward to Far Cry six at all. I am not buying Far Cry six. That is a big skip for me. I am sick and tired of Ubisoft games because they don't really change at all. And um, I can't tell you the last time I've enjoyed a Ubisoft game. It's been a long time. The last Ubisoft game I might have actually beaten was Far Cry 4. Um, and you got to understand, they've released a lot of games since Far Cry 4. And I have not been able... It's not, it's not like I haven't tried them. I've literally tried them and been physically unable to beat them because they are so bad to me. So, yeah. They they just use having great villains as a crutch. Nobody's gonna take away the, take away take that away from them. The fact that they have great villains, but they've started to use that as a crutch. Hey, we're gonna have great villains every game, but we're gonna keep the rest of the game the same. The mission structure, the concept, uh, this uh, you know this low guerrilla fighter overcoming some tyrant. It's the same concept, same thing, man. Um, same gameplay, same type of missions. The visuals don't even look vastly improved. None of it. Uh, Blood Hunt. So this is a free-to-play multiplayer game um, with melee combat. Early access, September 7th. I don't really know much more that much more past that. It looks... Yeah, it doesn't look like anything... It's third person. I mean, that's always good. Third person with, with powers. Third person is always good. That's always a good thing, right? Uh, Park Beyond. I actually thought this was like Roller Coaster Tycoon at first. So this is a new take on theme park management. And uh, for like modern audiences. So yeah, it's going to have like crazy roller coaster rides. And yeah, it's it's roller it's uh it's theme park management still. So I guess you can say it's almost like Roller Coaster Tycoon. I used to play that back in the day. I actually really liked Roller Coaster Tycoon. Jet, uh so this is that sci-fi game that we actually saw before where I think you're like in a spaceship. It reminds me of like Journey in a spaceship. If you remember the game Journey, it's like Journey in a spaceship. I don't know. That's that's what it reminds me of. Um Jet the Far Shore. That's, you know, uh, I'm not interested in it. Um, Horizon Forbidden West, we have a release date, which I called, by the way, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll see that I literally said Horizon Forbidden West is not coming out this year. It's coming out, um, February of next year. And I was right. It's coming out February, uh, 18th. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, excuse me. February 22nd. I thought it said February 18th. Guerrilla Games announced that Horizon Forbidden West will launch on February 22nd for PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4. I could have sworn it said February 18th. Unless this website is mistaken. Hold on. Let me double check. For Yeah, that website must be wrong because now this says it's coming to PS4 and PS5 on February 18th, 2022. Yeah, so I think this website that I'm looking on had looking at has a typo. Yeah, because it's definitely February 18th. And um, oh, the uh, oh, Horizon, Forbid Horizon Zero Dawn is finally getting a 60 frames patch. Um, that launches right now. It's, it's live right now. And that's just Sony's tactic, right? They, they give you a little bit of bad news. I mean, I don't look at it as bad news because I expected it to launch in February. Um, but some people were hopeful that it would launch this year. I'm like, there's no way it launches this year. So they give you a little bit of bad news, but a little bit of good news. 
and you know they try to cover it up a little bit. Hey, we're launching next year, but you get a 60 frames frames patch for Horizon Zero Dawn, and that's what they did. A uh, new world that, that's a cinematic trailer for Amazon games New World, which comes out uh, though the beta is September 9th and uh, goes to September 12th, and it will launch on September 28th. Don't really care about that game. Then there was this mobile Marvel game, Future Revolution. Don't really care about that. Tales of uh, Luminaria. So this is a mobile game also, I believe. This is a Tales game except on mobile, if I remember correctly, which, yeah, it is. Which, once again, don't care about because it's mobile. And then they had a mobile trailer for a, a, a Jumanji game. And then there was Lost Judgment which is not a game I care about uh, because that's like a spinoff of the Yakuza series and they talk too damn much in the Yakuza series, so that's why I don't care. And then there was Fallout, uh, Jungle Book um, crossover. So there's Jungle Book content coming to Fallout. And uh, by the way, if you haven't seen the Jungle Book live action movie, the live action movie is actually, there's two live action movies. I forgot which, I think it's Jungle Book and The Jungle Book. One of them is better than the other. But I would say both live action ones are better than the animated uh, cartoon, which rarely happens. Usually the animated cartoon is better. Um, Replaced is a like a neon saturated world. Wait. Was this the game that like it was just a song? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking out because. I remember I was looking at the trailer and I'm like, okay, this looked like some 8-bit indie game or something like that. And apparently it was, some people were saying it's just a song. They had a trailer for a song. Like what? Whatever. Um, Age of Empires 4. I'm a big Age of Empires fan. Um, I can't wait for this game. I'm I'm probably going to lose a lot of time and a lot of life to Age of Empires because that's something you really, it, it's it's very like mechanically deep and it's it's a very uh, nuanced and detailed game. Um, it's a lot to explore there, right? I played it. I played one and two a lot as a kid, and I never played three, and was never able to you know get back to it, get into it. So I'm picking up at four. So I look forward to four. Um, I'm hoping like no other major games are launching around that time, so I can completely sink my life into four and give it all my attention and become a complete age four nerd and uh you know just get into the get into the deep nooks and crannies of that game get into the weeds of that you know um valheim they talk about Val valheim we know valheim has had a lot of success uh over the last over this year um they have an expansion coming uh crossfire crossfire you know uh whatchamacallit what is it uh god damn what's their name they've uh damn it Y'all know who I'm talking about. They've been working on the single player version of this game. And but this was like a multiplayer trailer. And I'm like, this crossfire game seems so pointless. Like, I don't even know who's gonna play this. I don't know who who's gonna play this. Uh Crossfire campaign. They start with an R. I don't I don't know why. They made control. I really be be forgetting stuff, bro. I really be forgetting stuff. And it, it remedy. I'm like. Why do I have, I don't know why I have trouble remembering certain studios' names. It's too much to remember. Too many damn studios to remember at this point. The industry is flooded. The industry is saturated. There's so many damn studio names to remember. It's not like before where like it was like a lot less and it was easy to remember everything. Or maybe I just have bad memory. It could be. It could be both. Um, Aloy is in Genshin Impact. And Sifu. Uh well, Sifu's not in Genshin Impact, but that's that's the next game after they announced that Aloy is in Genshin Impact. Sony is clearly trying to market Aloy um, and like promote her, like because she was in uh, she was in Monster Hunter, I believe, Monster Hunter Rise or Monster Hunter World, one of those, and you know she fit pretty well in there, and now she's going to be in uh, Genshin Impact. So yeah, they're they're trying to like you know definitely get her more known because you know that helps her visibility and. You know, that also helps uh, her 
you know, the growth of, of her notoriety and uh, Horizon as an IP. Sifu. So Sifu is the melee combat game. As we know, this is launching. So this is launching February 22nd. This is uh, like, as I what was the wait? What was the first game I talked about? Hold on. So Saints Row is launching. Saints Row is launching February twenty fifth. Horizon is launching February eighteenth, and Sifu is launching February twenty second. That's very close. That's a that's a busy week. Um, I, I'm just I'm just a little leery uh, and suspicious of Sifu because every time they show this game, it's always like this a million jump cuts in it. They never just let the game play out. They never just let you see you know the, the let the let the just the, the gameplay uninterrupted. They it's always these jump cuts and these sizzle reels and you know these uh you know this very edited display and demonstration of the game and i don't know that just, that just makes me suspicious of it but uh we'll see and then lastly death stranding director's cut which i could not care less about because y'all know i hate death stranding and i do not want to talk about it so to summarize um i the show definitely had some things i was interested in uh, I do think it was worth watching. I do think it was worth live streaming. There was more things that I wasn't interested in than I than I was, but the things I was interested in were worth it uh, for me, right? And that's usually how it is for for me in most of these showcases. It's 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 rarely I rarely ever come across a show where like yeah I like the majority of what was shown. No, it's as long as I get like the few things that are meant for me that I like, I, I'm 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 good with it. Um. And uh, if I, I mean, if I had to rate the show, uh, I'm I am glad that they, you know, they didn't do too too much talking. That they really tried to show as much gameplay as possible, uh, or trailers as possible, because not all the game, not all the games had trailers. Not all the games had, not all the trailers had actual gameplay. Um, and it was two hours. It was hella long, longer than I expected. And we're gonna see more things reveal throughout the week because Gamescom is like still actually happening um but this show if i had to give this show a score i don't know uh give it a give it a five six something like that i'll, I'll give it a six i guess you know some arbitrary number doesn't really matter but uh, i'm glad i got some announcements that that i personally care about uh so yeah that's it that's a uh, super long ass review that um of this uh showcase let me know what y'all think uh hit the like button please um even though i know most of y'all you know probably didn't stay for the whole video because uh you know people have uh low attention spans and you know i know what the youtube retention rate is i know what my audience retention rate is so uh which is not a problem i know i know y'all got things to do or y'all don't either way hit the like button i uh, hit the notification bell um, so you can know anytime I live stream or upload a video so you can get them alerts, uh, follow me on Twitter. If you're not subscribe, if you're not hit the, hit the join member button to support the channel. And, uh, I will catch y'all on the next video. Check out weapon will podcast this week. We gonna have things to talk about and, um, yeah, definitely stay tuned to, to the channel. Plenty of content coming. I told y'all I was back. I told y'all I was back, so y'all gonna continue to get this content, continue to get this entertainment and these uploads. We in here, and we in here for good. All right, I'll catch y'all later. Peace.